Let us now start with uh, the description of the dynamic programming algorithm. So, what one does in a dynamic in the dynamic programming algorithm is one uh, one does the following. So, I will uh, I will explain the dynamic programming algorithm in the form of a prop in the form of a proposition and we will then do the proof of the proposition as well ok. So, the proposition is is as follows for every initial state. For every initial state x0, the optimal cost, remember we had denoted this by j star of x0, is given by the last step. of the following algorithm. So, you la so, the last step of the following algorithm and what is the algorithm? This is actually the dynamic programming algorithm. Well, what one does in this algorithm is the following. So, one proceeds backwards in time ok. So, you define j n of x n in the following way you define j n of x n as simply the terminal terminal cost which is you define j n of x n as g n of x n and this is so for we write this for all x n. So, we want to write this as a remember we need to write this as a function. So, j n of x n is, is declared to be identically equal to g n of x n ok. So, for all values of x n. Then for any then as I said we will proceed backwards in time. So, this is at time n. Now, what we will do is write this for times k less than n ok. So, at any other time k before that we write j k of x k as we write this to be equal to the minimum over all u k where u k belongs to has to be in the actions that you can take at time k. So, u k belongs to capital U k of x k and when we take now the expectation, the expectation so the the minimization is of this expression, the expression that I am about to write now. The, 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 this expression is the expectation of the stage wise cost at at time k plus the, the this function j k plus 1 that you evaluated ok, j k plus 1 eva evaluated at f k of x k u k w k. Now, recall again that f k here this here was my dynamics recall that ok, rec, uh, recall let me write this let me write this here recall that the dynamics was given in this form f of x k plus 1 is equal to f k of x k u k w k. Okay. So, we want this. So, so here is the uh, expression. So, for at, at uh, here is the algorithm at time n one uh, we declare j n of x n to be equal to g n of x n for all x n. At all other times k we write j k of x k to be equal to this and this again is for all x k and what this is also for all times. So, all k from 0 to n minus 1 
ok. So, we so this therefore tell uh, this algorithm basically asks us to do the following. It says we you take uh, the you write j you de, you declare you find or or define these functions you define these functions j n j uh, j uh, j n j n minus 1 j n minus 2 and so on uh, for all uh, for so in other words j k for all k from 0 to n j n is defined as equal to g n of x n that is what was given to us it is the terminal cost j k of x k for k less than n is defined recursively it is defined in terms of j k plus 1 that uh, that we have. So, the way this would work is that you 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 have j n already written up through that is through the through the through the terminal cost then you write using that you find j n minus 1 using this because in that you would have j n here out here then you write j n minus 2 using the j n minus 1 then you find the j n minus 3 using the j n minus 2 and so on. This would eventually get us to j j 0 for every initial state. So, that would this would eventually give us j 0 right j 0 of the uh, at every initial state. So, this would land up at land us up with j 0 of x 0 and what the, 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 the proposition here basically tells us that is essentially saying that j star of x 0 is, is nothing but j 0 of x 0. So, it is the last step of this particular algorithm ok. So, you do you apply this algorithm backwards in time starting from time n and at when you at time at time 0 you evaluate this uh, at x 0 and that tells us what the optimal cost is starting from time uh, time 0 ok. Now, it, there is also a second part to the uh, to the proposition which I will write that out here. The, uh, the proposition also says that if u star k equals mu k star of x k minimizes the RHS above. So, what is the above expression? It is this expression which minimizes this RHS for each x k and k, then the policy pi star which is given by mu 0 star to mu n minus 1 star is optimal ok. So, now let us reflect on this a bit. So, for that let us let us look at this expression a little bit closely. So, I just said that j k is defined recursively in terms of j k plus 1, but how exactly is it defined? So, it is defined by do you what you do is you do a minimization with respect to the action u k at time k. So, when we are do, when we are computing when we want to compute the left hand side here j k of x k or when we want to compute this right hand side here we are fixing an x k we are fixing x k to be any token state ok we let x k be any any state at time k for a, for any such state we compute this expectation and minimize it over all u, u all u k that are that are uh, that can be chosen in that state x k ok. So, you minimize this expression over all u k of x k ok o where u k small u k is chosen over all capital u k of x k. This minimization will give us a, a u k star ok. This minimization gives us a u k star which is the which is the optimal action but that u k star would be different for could be potentially different for different x k that u k star is going to be a function of x k because in this minimization problem that we have here x k is a parameter. So, x k being a parameter u k will now the optimal u k or u k what is denoted here as u k star this u k star is a function of of x k ok. 
okay. Now, it is and let, let, let us denote that function as mu k star okay. So, this minimization defines for us a function that maps x k to an optimal action and what is such a function? Well, that is that is that function is a decision rule, it is a Markov decision rule, it is mapping the state at that time to an action right. So, what this theorem is also telling us is that you put together all these Markov decision rules which is uh, mu 0 star to mu n uh, n minus 1 star put that then gives us a Markov policy and this policy is actually an optimal policy for the for our problem okay. So, here is therefore the summary for every initial state x 0 you if you want to find the what the optimal cost is what you do is you you solve you you do go through this this recursive algorithm and at each step in the recursive algorithm you, you uh, what you do is you minimize this 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 particular expression this cost if you recall the, uh, the so what is this cost this cost is the the stage wise cost plus the cost to go the cost to go evaluated at the next uh, the cost to go is evaluated at the next state the next state is written out as of using this function which is using the dynamics. So, the next state is expressed using the dynamics as a function of the current state, the action and the noise right. And then so, then one minimizes this. So, you take the expectation with respect to the noise. So, this expectation here is is it is with respect to the noise w k and one minimizes this expression over u k. You minimize this over u k you get u k as a function of x k let us denote that function as mu k star and uh, you key and you do this over uh, for every uh, for every k going from k equal to 0 to k uh, to uh, k equal to n minus 1 till till k equal to 0 and the claim is that well you are uh, the the optimal cost at x 0 is simply what the fun uh, is simply given by this function j 0 of x 0. Okay. So, it is it is given by the last step of this particular algorithm. Now, let us uh, so let us dwell on this uh, uh, dwell on uh, the uh, the efficiency of this particular algorithm as to why this is actually uh, helping us save uh, save some effort. If you see the initially when I when I mentioned that we you know if you look at the op problem of choosing the optimal policy over the set of all Markov policies. The set of Markov policies turned out to be a humongous number. It turned out to be A raised to B raised to B raised to N right where A was the number of actions, B was the number of states and N was the number of decision epochs or the time horizon. So, this was the number of policies. So, if you if you had to search over all of these policies this is the number of choices that you would have to cycle through. Now, let us see how many how many choices do we need to cycle through when we have when when we are doing this uh, when we have to apply the dynamic programming algorithm. So, what one does here is suppose uh, once again we have we have A actions and B states right. So, this optimization is an is a choice over A actions ok that is the number of actions that we have. So, there are A choices here. So, one has to basically compare A numbers. So, there are by that can be done by computing all all a of them and finding the least. So, you so this so this for every every value of the state x k can requires a a computations ok. So, if there are a actions this would require at most this can be accomplished by by doing a computations at most ok. Now, and this has to be done but this has to be done for each state for each value of x k. Now, x k itself can take b possible values since x k itself can take b possible values the this this computation has to therefore, be done for for b such values of x k. So, you need to repeat a calculations for b values. So, therefore, the number of computations you need to do is at most b times a. So, the, and this is the number of computations one needs to do for each stage and now this has to be done for each k since remember this we have to do this for k equal to 0 to n minus 1 
which means that we need to do b times a calculations at each stage. So, there and there are n stages. So, there will be the total number of computations that we need total number of computations becomes roughly a times b times n times some constants ok. I am ignoring all these all the trailing constants here. But this tells you what the total number of computations is roughly going to scale like. So, it scales like and uh, it scales as the number of actions times the number of states times the number of stages. If you com compare this with the pro complexity of listing out all possible policies, the, the problem of listing out all possible policies was basic uh, involved as doing these many listing out these many possible choices a raised to b times n. Obviously, this is a dramatic reduction no, no question about uh, about that it is very evident that that we have truly simplified the problem uh, by by doing this. So, what ha how has this simplification come about this simplification has come about by of by exploiting the additive structure of the of the cost function that the problem uh, our problem definition involved a cost that was defined stage wise. This additive structure gave us a recursive uh, way of computing the optimal policy which is uh, which is what is given in terms of the dynamic programming algorithm. That what this uh, what this has also done effectively another thing that you need to know to that that has happened in this is if you recall that I mentioned at the start of the course that any stochastic decision problem although involve it involves finding optimal actions which is finding vectors. The stochastic decision problem by its very nature forces us to think in terms of not actions, but in terms of strategies or policies. And therefore, the problem uh, uh, any any non trivial stochastic decision problem basically becomes a problem of finding op the op uh, finding the optimal function over a set of functions. Indeed, our policy set like pi m d pi h d etcetera these are also sets of functions. And when I when we do calculations such as a raised to b uh, b n, this is also the set of the number of functions that we have form a set of uh, uh, form a set of size b to a set of size a, right? So it is really a, uh, a so so the the problem that we had defined was really a problem had, had was essentially a problem of finding an optimal function over a set of functions. Okay, so that is what the uh, a stochastic problem basically reduced to. Now, because uh, because this these things uh, because because the problem is that of finding an optimal function, one could the the first instinct is to ask okay how many set of functions and try to solve the problem in the space of functions itself. But then that is that what we we realize here that that is not the op, the the best way of approaching this problem because we, there is more structure to this problem that we can exploit. And as a result of this structure, we get the dynamic programming algorithm. And if you see what is happening in each step of the dynamic programming algorithm is that we are not really finding functions at all. We are not finding any functions at all. We are really finding what we are, we are not optimizing over the set of functions. All optimizations that happen in the dynamic programming algorithm are vector optimizations. We are finding optimal actions, not optimal functions. Of course, we are doing this for every x. But that is still uh, that that implicitly defines for us a function, and that is that is true. But that is still far less complexity than searching over the functions directly. Okay, so what this has effectively done is reduce the search of uh, reduced what was a, what was uh, essentially a search over functions to a search over the values that the function can take, which is which is the U case essentially, and through the values you end up defining the function. Okay. This is this is this this is a this is an is an ex, extremely important and dramatic reduction. Okay. As we will see later in this course that there are uh, this this sort of reduction is something that we uh, we would all like uh, we would like to aim for in every possible problem. However, there are si significant limitations that come up later when we look at information structures and so on. But nonetheless, this is a this is this is a victory to savor because we have we have been able to 
uh, we have been able to bring down the complexity uh, quite significantly. So, let us quickly run through the proof of, uh, of this uh, of this particular proposition. So, it is uh, the, prop the proof will use basically the idea of induction ok. So, I will write out the proof here. So, let pi be a policy ok, be a, uh, be a policy and let pi k, pi superscript k denote the truncated version of this policy. So, you uh, look at the policy from mu k to mu n minus 1 ok, this be the truncated one. Now, let denote j star k of x k not j k remember j star k. Let this be the optimal cost of the n minus k stage problem So, the problem that starts from stage k and ends at time n. So, j star k is basically the minimum over all policies all these truncated policies the expectation of the terminal cost plus plus these stage wise costs, stage wise costs starting from k uh, up until n minus 1. So, this is j star k. Now, what we will uh, and and, sub and similarly let j star n also. So, we want this of course, for all x k let j star n also be defined as g n of g n of x n and this also is true for all x n. Now, what we will do is we will argue we will show that j star k of x k is actually equal to j k of x k, where what is j k? Well, j k is are the set of are the sequence of functions that are that are coming from our algorithm, it is these functions, j k are these functions ok the functions that come from the algorithm uh, are j k. What we will show is that these functions are nothing but the optimal cost, the optimal cost of the n minus 1 n minus k stage problem ok. And so, we will argue this by induction ok. We show this by induction. So, to show this by induction, so suppose, so uh, we already know this for n, it holds for n. So, for k equal to n, we already have that j star n of x n is equal to j n of x n and these are both equal to in fact g n of x n ok. So, for a k equal to n this holds, the induction hypothesis holds. Now, suppose it holds for some k, suppose for, for some k and for all x uh, for all x k plus 1, we have that j k plus 1 of x k plus 1 is equal to in fact j star k plus 1 of x k plus 1. Now, notice that we can write pi k the, uh, the truncated policy pi k as in this in the following way, we can write it as mu k the decision rule at time k and the truncated policy from k plus 1 onwards, the truncated policy pi k pi k uh, pi k plus 1 ok. So, so notice this. Now, 
if we if we notice this then we can write j star of j star k of x k this can be written as minimum the minimization over mu k comma pi k plus 1 of our expression which was g n of x n plus summation i uh, ok. So, in fact I let me I can write this much more. So, so we can do we can write j, j star a of x k in, in the following x, uh, compact way. We can write this as we pull out the, the stage wise cost here. We have also the terminal cost g n of x n and we have then the remaining stuff. The remaining stuff which is so going from i equal to k plus 1 till n minus 1 g i of x i u i w i. So, now we are minimizing this over u uh, over mu k and pi k plus 1, but then notice that mu k is on mu k actually comes up only here. So, what are we doing here? Well, your u k is in fact mu k of x k and u i is mu i of x i. So, in other words your mu k out of these mu k and pi k plus 1 the mu k only appears here. The, the ones that appear here are all the mu i is from for i equal to k plus 1 till n minus 1 ok. So, they, they are the uh, all the later the, the later mu's are the ones that appear here ok. So, as a result of this I can actually uh, write this in the following way I can take the pi k plus 1 inside. So, I write this as minimization over mu k I have the my expectation g g k of x k mu k of x k w k plus minimization of over pi k plus 1 of the expectation of g n of x n plus this summation which is which is which is i from k plus 1 till n minus 1 g i of x i mu i of x i w i. And well what is this particular expression? Well this expression is simp is, is this expression here is simply the optimal cost j star k plus 1 starting from the state uh, starting from the state x k plus 1 uh, that will result from the poly, uh, fr uh, from 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 the state x k and the state and the action mu k of x k. So, in other words this here I can write as I have j star k plus 1 of f k of x k mu k of x k comma w k. But then by induction hypothesis we, we had assumed that this j star is in fact equal to j k we had assumed that j star k is in fact equal uh, j star k plus 1 is equal to j, uh, j k plus 1. So, this j so this j star can be removed I can in fact I can erase the star here and the expression is still valid. So, this is still equal to uh, so this is therefore, uh, this equality still holds. But then now I, I can after having removed the star what I am left with is this right hand side and this right hand side is nothing is nothing but by by the dynamic programming algorithm this right hand side is not this it is actually this quantity. So, this is the same as the right hand side of this dynamic programming algorithm and that is nothing but j k itself right. So, this quantity therefore, is equal to 
j k of x k. So, in other words by uh, the induction hypothesis see, uh, the, uh, the induction hypothesis holds for k equal to n and then it holds we have assumed it holds for some k in between and then uh, from there we conclude that it holds for for uh, for any uh, for the next k as well and then and by and hence it holds for all k for so in other words we have for all k j k of x k is identically equal to j star k of x k and this therefore completes the proof because now for I just apply this for k equal to 0 and uh, x k equal to x 0 and then that tells me that the dynamic programming algorithm has actually produced for me the optimal uh, uh, the produced for me the correct call ok. One can go through this argument further and also show that uh, very easily that the, the policy that comes out of this that means the, the optimal mu that comes out of this is in fact also an optimal policy. This is a quick proof of, of the dynamic programming algorithm. In the next class what we will do is we will apply the dynamic programming algorithm to an actual problem of inventory control.